Good day folks, here is a small scale prototype of one of the many Don Smith processes just as a prototype on a small scale just to observe the effects. Of course Don Smith would use much larger capacitors and devices and whatnot. But just to show the crude principles here, let me explain how this works. So we have DC driving this mechanical, it's actually military grade, it was usually used for military. It's an ATR vibrator so it chops our input DC, which is 24 volts DC, into 60 hertz pulses, okay? So that gives you chop DC, which is perfect for driving a neon transformer. So this gives us our high 3K V plus, and what happens is this here is almost like a relay. Well, it basically is a relay, but one that could withstand and do full duty operation, so continuous duty cycle, in other words. So it's designed for power supply and things like that. So as you can hear, it's basically the almost like a motor, right? So anyways, we get the pulsed DC with all the HF noise, because this is rough, which the Neon Transformer loves, by the way. So what we're doing here is we are individually spark gapping each high voltage output. You see here is one spark gap, and here's the other. And I've come to realize on some of the Don Smith devices anyways that what looks like just a regular Tesla coil I think is more a dual resonance system. So basically on one side you have one L and on the other side you have another L but the L just helps to accommodate the spark gap, the spark gap for the resonance point. It finds its own resonance kind of like Don Smith was saying but not exactly in the same mechanism here as he was saying. So the Basically, the L is passive here, so you have one side and then the other, but they're not connected actually together, okay? And now, of course, our secondary, which is in here now, connects to, this would be the Don Smith way of recycling it with the magnetic. So, in our case, I'm just simulating the collecting with a very slow, very important, very slow big bridge rectifier. And as you see, this is our charge collection, which would then be used to be back into our input, right? This is how Don Smith charged his battery that ran the whole thing. In my case, I'm just doing it quickly like this with a transformer, AC to DC. It gets the point across, but this is what you get here to be able to charge and keep your battery going. This is what, again, I'm using very small values just to show the point of what's going on here, okay? Now, again, people are asking about the transducer, how you run your load. So here, on the primary side, we join on the high impedance, which is the high Z side of the transformer, and on the output. So this is, of course, I didn't have a circular core and all of that good stuff. I still don't have that yet. But just to prove the concept, I used a regular AC transformer to act as quote-unquote Don Smith's passive transducer method. This is the output which would run quote unquote regular mains, but of course for this demonstration this won't do it, but enough to observe a waveform on the scope. So you understand this being pulse DC, but once you do the filtering, this is what happens here. It's very crude, but this is what Don Smith said about slowing it down. It, when it does lock it, it finds it at around 40 to 50 hertz, even peaks at 70. So this doesn't, it's, it's very chaotic and noisy, but that looks like sine waves now. I could even change the skill and you'll see that. That's very sine wavy. It almost looks so analog loads wouldn't care. And look at the voltage, 130, 124 volts. And it looks like on average 50 to 60 hertz sine wave just by the core in here, averaging out the fluctuations and this is inherently made for 60 Hertz, so it wants to pump the magnetic domain on the output here at 60 Hertz, just by natural dynamics of everything. So this is all in a small scale, very simplified, okay? Now essentially what you want to do here is a big, big capacitor. This is what Tom Bearden referred to as your, your potential well. This goes up, 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 up. If you can, this should be actually in kilovolts. I'm just doing it on small scale. And what you want to do is strategically sip that. Sip, 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 not, not, without destroying the dipole, like Tom Bearden would state. 
and then send that back into your battery and control. Now what's interesting about the mechanical here, not only do we get chop DC, but we have real, they decided may as well use it as a relay, like a mechanical transistor at the rate here. So at 60 hertz, you could use this as an inherent, use one of the pins here to dump your potential well at 60 hertz or whatever back into your, without needing an extra switch. And then in these things, sometimes it's synchronization phase and everything. And when you use digital circuits, you have to worry about lag, interference, jitter, compensation, and all that. The mechanical way gives you a completely synced. And the phase really matters with this kind of stuff. So again, not, 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 this is just to, to, to simplify. You know, there's better ways than this down the road. But this is just to cruelly show the working mechanisms to show that, yes, of course, there's something there. We can enhance this. Now, of course, when you start introducing ground looping, that there's a whole difference with the displacement current and drastically boosts all this. It's optional, you don't need it. But if you have it, you could build a circuit like in some of the Don Smith papers and what people were talking about, introducing the spark to ground and the ground loop potential in all of this, which highly amplifies, because then you're sipping in part of the uh, earth potentials and creating a new displacement field. Any additional tap could help, right? So just putting that out there, and I just wanted to show you what he was up to on a small scale for now. And thank you for watching, and I hope this elaborates a bit of what he was up to. And of course, if you need to smooth it out the waveform some more, this is where Don Smith, without any specifications and confusions, he called it a slow down capacitor. On your secondary output, you put a capacitor here on these right there and the low, low value, and this will suppress those in between high frequency spikes and ultimately slow down to your transformers compatible frequency or around there ish. So essentially, there you go, Don Smith's slow down capacitor, telling you exactly where it goes. <laughs> he never did. <laughs> and he tried to mix it up with LC circuitry. So everyone was trying to figure out, how do you slow down with it? No, he means, you know, at the transducer stage. So there you go.